Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of my all-time favourite types of books, and it's one that goes by a couple of different names. When I was at uni studying bookbinding, we learned this one as a snake book, but I've also seen it called an oxplow book. It's a slightly different take on the accordion book, and it's made from a single sheet of paper with no glue and no sewing. You can make this from any size piece of paper that you want to, and I'm going to fold a few different sizes and orientations of the book in this video so that you can see how it works out differently depending on where you place your folds and tears. I've started with my smallest sheet of paper, and what I've done here is folded the page in half long edge to long edge, then I've folded each of those halves in half again so that the page is divided into four. I turned the sheet around 90 degrees and I'm making the same folds across the paper short edge to short edge. When all the folds are made, I'll flatten out my sheet of paper and it will be divided evenly into 16 rectangles. The next step is the important one in this type of book, and it's where we make a few strategic tears or cuts in the paper so that we can fold up the book. I want this particular book to have a landscape orientation so I'm making my tears in the direction that makes that possible. I start by making one tear right down to the last segment, and then I skip the next fold, move on to the third fold, and I make that same tear along it. After making these two tears, I rotate the whole sheet of paper 180 degrees and I make that same tear again in the opposite direction, stopping it just before the last segment of pages. What I'll be left with when I'm done is a sheet of paper that looks like a snake, or I guess a field that's just been ploughed by an ox. The last step is to fold up the book and it's done. When I get to the end of this video, I'll show you a few different cover options that work well for this kind of fold. Until then, I'm going to fold up a few more variations of this book, and I will also show you the absolute biggest book that I've ever made using this method. The great thing about this kind of book is that you really don't need a lot of tools to make it. At the most simple level, all you really need is a sheet of paper. The papers that I'm using here vary in thickness from 250 GSM to 350 GSM, and the very large book that I'll show you later is made from 640 GSM watercolour paper. You can also make this book from very lightweight paper. I creased all my folds with a bone folder to make the edges nice and crisp, but if you don't have a bone folder, you can just use your hands to make a nice neat fold. I'm also using a long steel ruler to make my tears, but if you make your folds very sharp, you should be able to tear them without a ruler or a straight edge. You can also choose to cut your edges with a knife instead of tearing them or a pair of scissors. I personally prefer tearing as I like the way that it looks, and it's also a bit more forgiving because it disguises any mistakes you might make more easily than a cut will. I laid out this pink book so that it would have a portrait orientation when I folded it up, and the next book will be made from a large sheet of paper so that you can see a different folding configuration. Before I get to that one, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. If you get some value out of what I make here and you want to buy me the equivalent of one of these sheets of paper each month, that would just be brilliant. Every little bit helps me make these videos better. This last sheet of paper measures 56 by 76 centimetres, and after I'd made my first series of folds, dividing the sheet into half and then half again like I did earlier, I measured a third of the way across the page, 
so that I could divide it into three before folding those thirds in half again. When I'd done this, I was left with a sheet of paper that was divided evenly into 24 rectangles that I could then fold up after tearing it into a book that was almost square. Another aspect of this particular book design that I love is that it makes a really sculptural object. You can fold them up and display them in a lot of different ways. And if you're exhibiting the books in an art show, you can use lighting to make some really dramatic and fun shadows, like in the next example that I'm about to show you. As I mentioned earlier, this is the biggest version of a snake book that I've ever made. This was made for my 2016 exhibition called Between Two Worlds in Melbourne, Australia, and it was a show about NASA's New Horizons mission to Pluto and the Kuiper Belt. This was made from the biggest single sheet of paper that I personally know about. You can get bigger paper in rolls, but as far as single sheets go, this one's about as large as they come. It's 640 GSM Lana Aquarelle watercolour paper measuring 104 by 152 centimetres and it weighs a full kilogram, which I know because I checked it on my kitchen scales after folding it up. 640 gram paper is very thick, so I had to score it lightly with a blade before I folded it. If you want to add a cover to your snake books, there are quite a few different methods that you can use. The first option is to simply put it inside a box, which needs no further explanation. The next option is a folded origami style paper cover, which I've demonstrated in a recent video and I'll link that in the description.
The third cover is a piece of heavy art paper folded with room for a spine and secured with a couple of bulldog clips. Of course, you can bind a snake book into a regular style book cover, but the few options that I've shown here make it possible for you to take the book out of the cover if you want to or need to. As always, please like, subscribe, share and leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. All the materials I used are listed in the description, along with links to my Patreon page, my website, my Facebook page, my Instagram and some affiliate links to a couple of good art stores where you can buy materials. If you're watching this video in January or February of 2020, don't forget that you've still got time to enter my art telephone challenge. I'll link that video in the entry form in the description as well. I've really enjoyed seeing all your entries so far and there's still plenty of time left for you to make something. Thanks for watching. Cheers.